Okay, in this example here, we look at a distance problem. These are always the fun problems that uh, you always see on some of the old movies from the 80s where uh, the person's getting ready to take the SAT test and they have this awful dream or something and it says problems about two trains and where the train's going to hit and all this kind of stuff. Well, this is one of these types of problems. Uh, distance problems are far and away uh, for students the hardest ones because there are so many different ways they can go uh, depending on what's going on. Uh, key first relationship in a distance problem is that distance is equal to rate times time. Now we use a distance rate and time chart to help us organize our information. It will not solve the problem for you but it will at least help you start to collect your information together. And so doing a little bit of labeling on our chart here, uh, we have a faster car and a slower car. So read the problem here. Two cars enter the Florida Turnpike at Commercial Boulevard at 8 a.m., each heading for Wildwood, which is some amusement park, I'm assuming. One car's average speed is 10 miles per hour faster than the other, or more than the other. The faster car gets there at 11 a.m., one half hour before the other car. What's the average speed of each car? How far did each travel? So because they started at 8 and got there at 3 a.m., the faster car took three hours. The slower car took three and a half hours. So what we want to do is go into this problem and label down what we know. Well, one car is 10 miles per hour faster. So the faster car will be 10 miles per hour faster than the slower car. So, I decided, excuse me, went too far there, I decided to let the speed of the slower car be x, so the faster would be x plus 10. You could have made x be the faster car, in which case the slower would have been x minus 10. The final results will all work out correctly. The equation we'll have will be a little different depending on how we set it up. Now, knowing that the faster car got there in three hours, I can label his time as three hours. The slower car was three and a half. I can label it as three and a half. That's all the given information that we have in this problem. Uh, so what we can do now is use our distance rate and time formula to solve for anything we don't know, which we don't have an expression for distance. They can tell us how far it is from... Commercial Boulevard to Wildwood, we don't know. Is it 50 miles? Is it 100 miles? 300 miles? Now, what's going on? So, we don't know that. But we can come up with expressions using distance equals rate times time. So, multiply the rate x plus 10 times 3 gives us a distance of 3 times x plus 10 for the fast car and a distance of 3.5 times x for the slow car. Now there is a little bit of information that we know. Both cars started at the same point. Both cars ended at the same point. So now we use that information to write our equation. 3x plus 30 equals 3.5x. And now we set about solving that equation. So we add or subtract 3x from both sides, get 30 equals 0.5x, and then divide by 0.5 to get that x equals 60. Now remember, x was the speed of the slow car. So the first question was, what was the average speed of each car? Well, the faster car was 10 miles faster, so it would be 70 miles per hour. The slower car was going 60 miles per hour. The final question is, how far did each car travel? Well, they both traveled the same distance. That was our underlying assumption. So we can take the speed of either car, uh, multiplied times the time, to get the distance. So whether we do 70 times 3 or 60 times 3.5, we will get that they traveled 210 miles on this trip with an average speed for the faster car of 70 miles per hour and an average speed for the slower car of 60 miles per hour. Okay?